you see that, right? So welcome back guys, and in this video I'm going to be talking about why apparently as long as Donald Trump is in office there will never be a dull moment in the markets. Now in all seriousness, as of today we found out that Donald Trump, due to immigration statuses, uh, is now going to be implementing a 5% scaling tariff on all of Mexican imports starting June 10th. And this is going to continue to increase in size for the foreseeable future. It's going to be a rolling increasing tariff so after june it will go to july and then it will become a 10 percent and then a 15 and 20 percent and so on and this took everybody completely by surprise no one expected this to be coming out of the woodwork from donald trump uh granted i can't say i'm too surprised that he would do something like this because he seems to really like to be able to just throw tariffs on everything and believe that he'll get his way um but I'm not exactly sure why this type of situation is transpiring in the market and doesn't really seem that anybody in the market really has a good understanding of why this is happening either but uh, what i'm going to be doing is i've been looking at this all today obviously i'm still learning about this as this is such a brand new topic that no one really saw coming um, but i'm going to share with you guys my thoughts on exactly what's going on right now and then what kind of consequences this type of environment that is uh, you know kind of shaping up to be in the global economy uh, what type of economic environment can we expect you know, in the foreseeable future if things do not drastically change as the way that they've been going? So if you guys are interested in that, make sure to stick around, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and let's get in the video. Now, if any of you looked at the market at all today, you noticed that pretty much everything was down across the board. We can take a look at the overwhelming S&P 500, and just about every name on it is in the red. And not just, you know, a little bit of red, you know, low down day most companies especially most you know household company names are down between two and four percent today alone uh you know the all the indices are down over a percent today and this all came off of news that donald trump just decided that due to you know a couple of immigration policies that he does not like the way that they are progressing he is going to start forcing mexico into a corner by rolling up these tariffs and really putting pressure on them now uh, the main reason why this is such, uh, you know, an important topic for the overall market is that the majority of global companies generally focus a lot of their manufacturing and supply chains through Mexico, especially if you want to take, uh, for example, the automakers. The automakers are probably going to be hit the hardest if any of these tariffs actually go through than any other sector in the stock market. And that is because whenever you compile a car, you know, you generally have, you know, say six to seven shipping processes per vehicle uh, between the U.S. and Mexico, between when you get a part from the United States, you go and assemble it in Mexico, then you bring it back, you tweak it, you put it back in there, you keep assembling it, you tweak it, you manufacture it, and you can look at, you know, GM, Ford, uh, and Chrysler, and they all kind of just kind of shuffle their auto manufacturers around, you know, North America. Um, even companies such as Tesla do have up to 25% of their manufacturing costs coming directly from Mexico. And now all these companies are going to be paying, you know, an extra 5% ticket, you know, just to shuffle it back and forth between the two countries. Uh, you know, it, it has come out that it, it is anticipated that roughly every American car, you know, with an average price tag, you know, like say like, okay, let's say like 35, uh, 35, 25 to $35,000 is going to be expected to have an increased price tag of roughly $1,300 just off of the 5% tariff alone. So you can only imagine how expensive cars and how unwilling people are going to be to go out and buy a new car, you know, if these tariffs start to really stack up on top of each other and nothing really gets resolved in the White House. And you couple this with the fact that auto sales, everybody seems to think that they have peaked in recent years and you think that the whole auto industry is in decline already. Really not a good situation if you are at all involved in auto stocks or if you are employed by any auto manufacturer. So it would be a great time if you plan on buying a car until recently. Um, but now, you know, consumers are going to get squeezed and companies are going to be getting squeezed. And that kind of is the main point of what I'm going to be talking about in a little bit about what type of environment economically, uh, you know, the global environment could be developing in this landscape. Uh, and it's something that, you know, we haven't seen in a few decades. Obviously, I could be completely wrong with this, but it is the type of economic environment that we saw in the 1970s that I think we are kind of, you know, foreshadowing going back to. And if you guys know anything about the 1970s, not a lot of people made money and a lot of people lost their jobs. So let's hope that we do not hit that same economic environment. And now, of course, we cannot forget about China and all of this. China and the U.S. have been in a trade war for over a year now. 
and neither side really seems to be giving much ground in this. Uh, China seems to be approaching the U.S. as a more of confused situation as to why are you implementing these now, while the U.S. is still not budging because they realize that they are losing $5 to gaining $1 every time they do a transaction with China. So both sides definitely understand, you know, have their reasons as to why they're, you know, confused to this and why they're very stubborn on this. For China, if they just roll over and let this happen, it will take a huge blow to their economy. And the U.S., you know, is more or less fed up with looking at the type of trade agreement we have, especially around int int intellectual property. And, you know, both sides are kind of just not having it. So obviously there's not going to be a quick end to the whole uh, U.S. and China trade war. And now, assuming we add in a Mexico and U.S. trade war into that, uh, there could be very interesting trade terms going for the next, you know, say decade. Because neither one of these situations... Uh, you know, Mexico is still, you know, kind of incubating, so we'll see how that goes. When a country starts to impose tariffs on another country, this isn't something that, you know, is normally done with just kind of like, oh, I'm going to slap it on, but I'm going to take it off in about a year, yada, yada, yada. These are generally things that will progress and kind of manifest themselves over, say, a decade. And as people were talking about when the China situation started rallying up, uh, most people didn't think that this would be fully resolved, you know, for a minimum of 10 years, could even go to 30 years, uh, as, you know, when Jack Ma uh, gave a couple of comments about it. Um, you know, trade on a, you know, global geopolitical scale is a very complex and interesting thing. But as companies start to react to all these things, you know, they start to switch their you know their uh, supply chain around and then once they switch their supply chain around even if the tariffs go away they generally won't switch back just because it's gonna you know they're gonna eat the costs to switch the supply chain then it becomes a sunk cost and then they're not gonna just you know pay for another sunk cost to switch it back so this is just going to have long-term lasting effects on the majority of economies that are getting affected by these tariffs and so i definitely do not think that the landscape that we have had over the past 10 years is going to be the same that we're going in into the next 10 years uh and you know with trump now just kind of really starting to kind of bandwagon around the fact that i can throw a tariff on any country i want when they aren't doing what i want them to do will probably lead us to a very very interesting environment now, the type of environment that I'm afraid that this is going to kind of push us into is called stagflation. Now, stagflation, when you think about it, is when you have a slowing economic growth that we've already been you know, experiencing when you see how China's economic growth has been slowing, the U.S. has been slowing. A lot of it is due to the tariff, but the other fact of it, the matter is that we have been you know, in an economic expansion for over 10 years. We just had a tax cut, you know, on a individual and a corporate level. And normally those are done to stimulate a com uh, an economy. So pretty much all that that did was just boost our economy to the, you know, the upper bounds of what it could possibly be going at. So, you know, to quote, you know, a kind of cliche, our market is, you know, screaming high right now. You know, it's rolling tops. No one really thinks that the market's going to be going into recession. Well, until recently. Uh, and right now you, you kind of are at the tipping point where unless something really happens, Everybody seems to be, you know, be slowing growth, which would normally be fine, and that would normally result in, you know, a say standard correction, uh, correction or a minor recession. However, uh, now we're going to be introducing a situation where companies can no longer just lower prices to combat and slower sales growth. They're going to have to actually increase prices to maintain at all, uh, you know, relative levels of profitability. Because now every time that they, you know, plan on making a purchase or creating a product. They're going to have to take, you know, anywhere between a 5 and 25% coupon rate on that because now anytime, like say an auto manufacturer is going to now make a car, like I said earlier, they're going to have roughly another $1,300 of costs just floating around that they didn't have yesterday. <laughs> so, um, and when you have this type of environment, you have the economy slowing down, you have prices increasing, and then you don't really have any sort of way of, you know, the monetary system, uh, you know, kind of keep a hold of inflation. So very quickly, inflation kind of gets out of hand. You know, the value of the dollar starts to drop to the floor. Um, value of commodities such as gold starts to go up. And so the buying power of the individual starts to go down, but the cost of the products starts to go up. So you kind of have a twofold negative impact and it's a self-reinforcing cycle, which is why it's so devastating when it hits the economy, such as what happened in 1970 through 76, I believe. Uh, and it's just a horrible, horrible environment unless you are hedged accordingly. And so that was kind of a long roundabout way to, you know, kind of caveat this whole thing was 
no matter what type of investor you are, always make sure that you are ready for any type of economic environment. So whether that means that you are just going to be totally sole so uh, solely stocks regardless and you're just going to dollar cost average no matter what happens because you know you have a 20 plus time horizon, uh, 20 plus year time horizon uh, whenever you're going to retire, perfectly fine pretty solid strategy but if you're someone that's looking to retire you know within the next 20 years within the next 10 years if you aren't like you know well balanced and hedged for the majority of different economic factors that you could be going into uh you might want to start doing some research on that i highly recommend ray dahlia's book a template for a big debt crisis uh that's linked in down in the description below love to read it it goes over a couple of the issues that happened in the 1970s and he talks about you know what were kind of the asset classes that did well what didn't do well and what caused that type of correlation but uh the type of situation we're going into right now um while you know calling it you know kind of calling that we're heading for stagflation is definitely you know overzealous and it's definitely you know a big you know what if because it requires a lot of things that have only just started to continue on you know for the next five ten years um but it is now more of a possibility than it was say a week ago and that's something i just really wanted to bring to everybody's attention i know a lot of the people that view my channel you know we're really in a tech you know we're really exposed to to global companies you know companies like say intel that have that do the majority of their business in china and in the united states or you know if you're a comp or if you're interested in a company like general motors and you know half of their you know costs are done in mexico and the other half are done in the united states um these types of situations can drastically blow up whatever you planned on getting for your returns of these companies and that is why you really need to you know kind of counteract a way that you can still make money or not lose as much money regardless of what type of economic environment you're going into so that was just kind of a brief overview of what the heck is going on with President Trump. Obviously, there's more information coming in, you know, by the minute on this topic. Uh, but that is something I just definitely wanted to start a conversation here on the channel. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this uh, in the comment section down below. And I want to hear your thoughts about, like, do you think that, you know, it is right for the United States to start imposing tariffs on uh, Mexico's imports just because of an immigration policy? Or do you think that, you know, Trump's kind of lost it? Or do you think that, you know, we need to be doing, you know, an issue to address immigration, but on a different, you know, spectrum, not really focusing on trade with it? Uh, I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts on this. Maybe some of you guys know stuff that I don't about the Mexican economy. I'll be perfectly honest. Um, I know maybe 5% of what I should about the Mexican economy. We've had to do a couple of case studies, you know, through, uh, you know, uh, auto manufacturers going that throughout college. But other than that, I have not really spent too much time focusing on the relationship between the United States and Mexico. But that being said, I would like to hear you guys' thoughts on it. So let me know in the comment section down below, and I hope you guys got some use out of this video, and I will catch you in the next one.